Hi, it's so good to be on the Walter, Dr. Walter Sims show. He's such a marvelous fella, and I just encourage everybody to stay tuned and watch every Saturday at 8.30 a.m. in the morning on Channel 5. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm Carolyn the Good Shepherd, and I have a poem called Obedience. And it's because it's important that I wanted to share it with you because the more we are obedient, the closer we can get to God and make him happy because we're doing his will. And that's what we're really here for, to be obedient to God's will. And this one I happened to write in 2006. Obedience. When I see the sky, the birds, the grass, and the trees, to give thanks to my creator, I get down on my knees. God, you say your thoughts and ways are not our thoughts and ways. Down through the years, you show your mighty awesomeness, nights and days. The Bible shows me your miracles and power. They are forever new. How can I show you how much I love you? What can I do? Jesus did a wonderful job while on earth of showing us how to live. He healed, gave sight, raised the dead, and taught us how to forgive. I remember how you chose jo Moses and Jonah with direct commands to fulfill. They reacted differently, but most importantly, they both obeyed your will. I know what I can do when I hear your soft, sweet voice in my ear. I will do whatever you say because you always make my way clear. Most often your task might seem too big for me to complete. However, Lord, you're always near with love to guide my wandering feet. You give me so many reasons to want to love you and obey. So I shall do your will and I'll show it best by what I do and what I say. Yes, be obedient. Woo, be obedient. <laughs> and that's so important, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. And another thing, truth. No more lies. No more lies. Because you can't be obedient, lie. Amen. It only causes confusion, misunderstanding, and there's no, no foundation, so it can't grow. A lie is just some, uh, some useless words. So what we need to do is make sure when we open our mouth, the right words fall out. Think about what you say before you say it to make sure that it is the right thing. Only positive things need to come out of your mouth. The negative thoughts you think about, excuse me, zip your lip. Don't let them fall out because they're only messing up the atmosphere. We need a pleasant atmosphere with peace so the lion and the lamb can lay down together. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Don't miss the Dr. Walter Sims Show, Saturday mornings at 8.30 on WDFX-TV, Fox 34. Even though the old winds blow, I want you to know you cause me no alarm. Couldn't say in his arms. Even though your rain falls, I can still make this call. All right, all right. Let there be 
guys for all of your nutritional and health needs go see my friends at health concepts located at 1901 wise drive here in dothan alabama they're open monday through friday from nine o'clock a.m to five o'clock p.m and they're open on saturdays from 10 o'clock a.m uh, till about one o'clock p.m uh i love the water that they have their water is better than any water that you may find listen go see lisa doreen and sam the water man and they will help you live a healthy and nutritional lifestyle you would think that they know him by now uh -huh. my lord some of us are the same way church yeah we've seen miracles happen all around us all through yeah. our lives yeah. And we still don't know who he is. The question is, do you know it? Do you know Come it? On, do you man. know it? Come on. Now in verse 13, he asks a question. I'm gonna give you something here. There are more revelation in the questions of God than the answers of men. All right. Now. So whenever you see a question in the Bible, you need to look at that one much more closer than you see any answer. Mm -hmm. All right. So he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? All right. They come back with their expected answer because the question isn't telling who do the other people say that I am that don't have an intimate relationship with me. They're not following around with All me right. every day. Yeah. So right. he gets the normal answer. All right. But then he asks the million dollar, the million dollar bonus All question. Right. All right. Right? In verse 15, he says, but who do you say that I am? Which brings me to my first point. Y'all get this one. Big mom relationship don't make it your relationship. It doesn't matter if your grandmama knew Jesus. She prayed three times a day. It doesn't matter if you married to the deacon, the senior deacon. You married to the pastor or the minister. You got to have a relationship with Jesus. You can't hang your head on what somebody else knows. All right? Now notice this here. You gotta get this now. Notice that only one out of twelve of the disciples answers quickly and boldly that you are the Christ, Son of the Living God. All right. Now. That's not a good odds there. That means that if they ask everybody on your pew, 
maybe only one out of you would know the answer. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it's got to be me, it's got to be me. It's got to be me. I don't want to be the one with the wrong answer. All right? <laughs> Not on this one, though. That's what I'm talking about. Dude. All right? Then in verse 17, he answered using Peter's whole government name. Yeah. Now, you know when mama called you by your whole name. <laughs> your middle name. Yeah, that the next thing that was about to come out of her mouth was going to be life or death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yours if you didn't answer quickly. Yeah. Or move yeah. fast enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Amen. Amen. Now he tells Peter that he is blessed. But don't miss this. Why he's blessed? Mm. Come on, come on. That brings me to my second point. He says, because you have been playing such close attention That's to good. what I have been yeah. teaching you, my Father have revealed this to you through the Spirit and not by man. All right. All right. All right. This teaches us that only the Holy Spirit of God yeah, can right. reveal the fullness of Christ yeah. to you. Yeah. Now this can be confirmed if you need to check it out yeah. and get a second opinion. You can get a second opinion from John 14 and 21. And this is what it says. He says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, mm -hmm. it is he who loves me. All right. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. Yeah, yeah. And I will manifest myself to him. Yes. Mm. Uh, Have you seen Jesus lately? All right. Because it yeah. says here, that's who he's gonna manifest yeah. himself to. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen him lately? Yes, sir. So you need the Holy Spirit to fully manifest the fullness of his power and his might. Yeah. Therefore, Peter, since you have seem to be the only one that possesses the gift, yeah. this is what you're gonna get for it. Come on, come he on. He tells him that this is the faith which the, we mentioned, the faith that comes that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart yeah, yeah. of who he is and what he is, that the foundation of the church is going to be built on. That's yeah. right. Now you've seen this foundation yeah. around Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, when it talks about two different men who are going to build a house on yeah. different foundations. That's right. That's right. One man That's right. takes the time to dig deep. That's right. That's hit right. some rock. To yeah. build his house. Huh? Yeah. But the other man, he yeah. calls him foolish, I think, yeah. preacher. Yeah. I think right. he says foolish. Yeah. That's right. He wanted to go up fast, so for sure, he just built his house on sand. Yeah. Now, if you do this, it's yeah. going to be a problem. That's right. That's right. Because if you don't build it on the right foundation, Jesus Christ, yeah. you won't be able to stand the storm. Amen. And trust me, I can testify this week. The storms are coming. Amen. This week I have been attacked like I have never been attacked before. Amen, my Lord. Attack after attack has been coming to our house. All right now. If I had not been grounded in Jesus, Come on. I wouldn't be here today. I would have lost my mind this week. Come on. I have lost family members. The church has lost family members. That's right. That's my mom right now. Or uh, just a day ago was in a diabetic coma in a hospital in Cordell right now. My Lord. He's trying to shake me, trying to see if I will stand strong and still Amen. focus on him Amen. and come here and deliver this message Amen. to you. But I'm telling you, I'm obedient. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's one thing you can say about David Collins. He's obedient. Yes, He's going to do what the Lord said. Amen. No matter how crazy it may sound, I'm going to yeah. walk. Yeah. That's with the path that he's put before me. Yes. Now get this. He said, first I will establish my church and earth on this solid foundation yeah. so that you can withstand these storms. And secondly, this church will be so strong that the gates of hell should not prevail. Yes. Now I got to expound on that for a second. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Because I want you to understand gates don't attack nobody. Amen. When's the last time you see a door jump off a hinge and chase somebody? Amen. 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 That's not what it's talking about here. Come on. Come on. But for you to understand that, you have to understand that the church is not this building we're in right now. Yeah. That's right. That's right. The church is in you. Yeah. You are the church. And what the scripture is trying to tell us here is that you, the church, whatever you do in the earth, and you should be growing and moving, that the gate won't stop you. Because all a gate do, as we learned this morning in service, a gate restricts access. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. So it's telling us that as Christians in the church that this gate is supposed to try to stop us from growing. It's supposed to stop the church from moving forward. Yeah. So it's the church the one that's moving. Yeah. But it shall not prevail. Yeah. No gate should stop us. You can take all the vows out the chapel. Yeah. 
It ain't gonna stop this ministry. All right? All right. You can put my mom in the hospital. The same one that put her there can raise her up. You will not shake this foundation. And I love family members that I have lost this week. I know with the assurance of your word that they are in a better place. They have simply entered your rest. And now they are with you. Y'all see that? I'm just talking. Just talking. Just talking. Just talking. Just talking. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, verse 19, lastly, all right, this is going to bring me to my last point here. All right. He wants to give you some keys. Yes. The keys. Yes. He's going to give you some keys. Yeah. And this is the point I want to make. This is my last point. That's all right. Once you know who he is, you can have the keys. Look at your neighbor and say, I got the keys, I got the keys, I got the keys. Look at the other neighbor. They, they didn't shout enough. They must have lost the keys. They must have lost the keys. They got the keys. I got some keys. Now, keys give us access. And with access comes power. He tells Peter as part of this church, you have authority to speak to your situation and change it. Yeah. Don't be no weak Christian yeah. laying down, letting this stuff just beat up on you. Yeah. Speak to it. Like he did when he was on the ship. Yeah. Master, don't you care we perishing? Yeah. He said, come up on top of that. He, he just spoke to it, didn't he? Yeah. He said he rebuked the wind. Peace. Spoke to the sea. Be still. And everything sat down and was quiet. Yeah. So these kings here are going to give us some power here. Let's see what it's going to do for us, though. So he tells them that this situation that you have, this power, gives you the power that whatever you bind, restrict, tie up, prohibit, disallow the earth, speaking it will have the same effect in the spiritual realm. Because you see, it's already been done in heaven. That's the key there. It has already been done. All right? Everything that you are seeing and binding has already been bound up by Jesus. That's the knowledge. That's the knowledge. That's why it works. Because it's already tied up in the spiritual. He just needs somebody in the earth strong enough with enough knowledge to know I got the power. Stop letting that car sit in the garage. Take it out and drive it. You got the keys. You got the keys. All right? Oh, it's a boy here. It's a boy here. Don't get excited yet. It's a boy here. Check this out now. He said, because you already, you know this already, all right, this is all part of the finished works of Christ that he done on the cross and the grave. Yeah. So he gives us some more power here. Yeah. Yeah. He said, now you also have the power to loose, release, untie, to set free prosperity, healing, peace, love, good health. Because that too has already been done in heaven. Yeah. Oh, you don't know what God has in store for you. You know, God ain't up there in heaven thinking about how he can mess up your next week. Or how he can trouble you next week. He only has good thoughts for you. You just got to claim them. I think I heard that somewhere in the Bible. All right? This is what he promises us. Don't miss the Dr. Walter Sims Show, Saturday mornings at 8.30 on WDFX-TV, Fox 34. Hey everybody, happy Motivation Monday. Do you like social media? Are you even using social media? What is social media? What is hashtag? I laugh at my friends so for laughing at me for using social media. They call me the selfie king because if I like it, I'm going to take a picture of it and post it to my Instagram, which is Facebook, which is Twitter and all that good stuff. Speaking of Instagram, I have met the cutest couple the happiest couple, the most loving couple that I've seen in a long time. And they are all the way over in Dubois. Uh, they just got married March the 18th and they are so happy. Uh, they met the young man saw an Instagram picture of the young lady. Uh, they, they start talking and look at them. Now they're married. They're happy. They are smiling and they picked up my hashtag million smile March. Dr. Sims, what is million smile March? I want to make a million people smile. And I know right now in Dubois, 
I have a couple that's picked up my hashtag and they are talking about it and they are tagging their pictures with that hashtag. That touches me. Social media can be that vehicle you use to, to uh, support your message, to get your message out if that's what you want to do. A lot of people talk bad about social media. Oh, they say it's of the devil. It's all about drama. But guess what? Guns don't kill people. Come on. People kill people. So if you all, if, if all you seeing is drama, guess who really putting all that out? So, so Doc Sam, how are you talking about social media and how does it impact uh, Motivation Monday? It is doing this. If you want to be positive, Social media can help you be that positivity that you want to promote. Whatever it is that you want to promote, social media can help you do it. I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed right now that, that I'm international now. I mean, I've been international for a minute, but I'm really international now. I'm here in Alabama, and they're all the way over in Dubai. I have people in France talking about me, and I'm just so thankful that social media is helping me. Uh, uh, get my message out, my message of motivation out, and it just thrills me. So you use whatever you need to use to help you uh, live on purpose because that's what this is all about. You, whatever method you want to use to get your message out, to help you live on purpose, to help you fulfill your destiny, you do that. No excuses. If you want to know why I'm talking about this today on Motivation Monday, no excuses. There's no excuse for you not to be successful at what you're doing. Is that all right? Listen, if you need somebody to help push you, you need somebody to help you live out your destiny, you call me. Get in touch with me. Tweet me. Instagram me. Take a picture. Send it to me. Get a carrier pigeon. Let it fly to me. I'll get your message. Is that all right? At Dr. Walter Sam. I'm here to pump you up. I'm here to get you going. I'm a purpose finder. That's what I do. Listen, Mr. and Mrs. B, love y'all. Love y'all. Keep loving each other. Keep Don't miss the Dr. Walter Sims Show, Saturday mornings at 8.30 on WDFX-TV, Fox 34. For all of your event planning needs, get in touch with my friend, Miss Q of Q's Touch. You can dial her up at 334-596-2472. She treats your event as if it was her very own event. So again, you get in touch with my friend, Miss Q of Q's Touch. That's 334-596-2472. And tell her Dr. Sam sent you. Well, this is Palm Sunday weekend. And next weekend is Easter weekend. So the doctor and I talked about it, and he said, well, let's have an Easter poem. So I have an Easter poem I'd like to share with you. It ca it's called Jesus Lived. And by the way, I wrote it in 1980. <laughs> it says Jesus had a miraculous birth to help people see his powerful worth, to prove that he was king of all kings, he showed the world many marvelous things, like healing the sick, giving sight to the blind, raising the dead, and using water to make wine. He taught his disciples about God and how to pray. His teachings back then, we're still learning today. Jesus had a great following once the word got around. People longed to be near him, to just touch his gown. Swiftly and larger, his popularity grew. But his crucifixion and death, he already knew. The disciples at the Last Supper all wanted to know the betrayer. Well, all except for Judah. He was Jesus' treasurer and slayer. John whispered to Jesus, Lord, tell me which one he is. Jesus passed the stop to Judah, who ran to collect the silver that was his. Jesus carried his cross up to Mount Calvary. On Good Friday, he hung there for all the world to see. The nails hurt his body, so Jesus cried. The sky turned dark, he gave up the ghost, 
and he died. Jesus knew death would lose and he would win. He chose Easter Sunday as his time to rise again. La, la, la. For a few more days, Jesus showed his hand with the wound, with his wound, telling his followers how he walked out of the tomb. When Jesus was lifted up to heaven, his disciples watched with awe. It was the most beautiful sight that they had ever saw. Every time Easter arrives, we can truly celebrate. For we serve and praise Jesus, whom we all appreciate. Let's all say, Jesus is special. Jesus is great. Jesus is special. Jesus is great. Take that with you all year, and happy Easter. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Don't miss the Dr. Walter Sims Show, Saturday mornings at 8.30 on WDFX-TV, Fox 34. We would like to thank our guests for appearing on the Dr. Walter Sims Show this morning. If you would like to advertise with us, become a sponsor, or even be a guest on our show, please contact our office at 205-225-9757 or send an email to the Dr. Walter Sims Show at gmail.com. The Dr. That's D-R. Walter Sims Show at gmail.com. Again, thank you for tuning in. May God richly bless you, and we will see you again next week. <laughs>